My name is Captain Olimar. While traveling through space, my ship was struck by a meteor. I must have blacked out, and I awoke on the surface of a weird planet. With so many parts lost, the skeletal hull of my beloved dolphin is a painful sight. The engine is gone. I'm stranded. To make matters worse, my atmospheric sensors indicate this planet's environment contains high levels of poisonous oxygen. My life support systems can function for only 30 days. If I cannot repair the dolphin by then, no. Better not to think about it. I must find the missing ship parts. I don't know about you, I've honestly had worse parking jobs. Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome to the new series of Let's Play Pikmin for the GameCube. This is a series that is actually very near and dear to my heart. It was actually one of the first uh, strategy games on Nintendo that I played, even before I played the Battalion Wars and Advance Wars series. And ever since I saw the first trailer for this game, I was really just enamored with the the creativity, the, the character designs, and also the adorableness of the pick in themselves. But for now, we are stranded on this planet, this very familiar looking planet. Our beloved dolphin is... Honestly, a little bit worse for wearers, but if we can find ourselves some ship parts, maybe we can get this thing fixed up and get home in no time flat. So, let's just head on out and see if we can find ourselves some ship parts. Uh, it's really going to be quite an endeavor to get that back to the ship, seeing as how heavy that stuff is, but I'm sure we'll manage. Remember, always lift with your legs. A strange thing has appeared before me. I have barely begun my search when it reared up as if it were waiting for me. Then it dropped a single seed. What is it? Is it alive? Is it a machine? It resembles a vegetable on my home planet that we called an onion. I shall call it an onion too. Very creative, Olimar. Hmm, well, this is a very peculiar looking seed. I wonder what would happen if I were to pluck it. Maybe it's something edible. Although, seeing as how it seems to be glowing, that might be an account of radiation. I probably should not eat it. The seed that the onion dropped took root in the soil and has now produced an adorable little sprout. The sprout emits a strange light, and it sways back and forth without benefit of wind. I cannot help but think it's calling to me. I am compelled. I must approach it and press A. What is this A button that I am speaking of? I don't know, but I must press it anyways. He's adorable. I want to adopt him. Extraordinary! When I plucked the sprout, it turned into a living creature, not a plant. Picking it has done no visible damage. It just stands there, staring at me. Its shape is similar to a pick pick brand carrots I love so much. I believe I shall call it a Pikmin. Here I am, stranded on a toxic planet, fighting to survive, and yet I'm intrigued. I must research this fascinating creature. I shall try to grab it and throw it with A. I will call it to my side with B. Hmm, perhaps it'll react to C and X as well, and why do I keep saying these letters like they mean something to me? The following controls appear to allow several viewpoints. I'll rotate the camera, R, zoom in and zoom out, and Z to change angle. I must survive. I need to familiarize myself with these controls and my surroundings. Hello, small child. I shall be your father from now on. Come! Let us go on an adventure and find some missing ship parts. You're a courageous young one, but apparently you are not strong enough to push this by yourself. We need help. We need more. We must have more Pikmin. We must capitalize on this brand. Go, attack this plant. And drink from its sustenance. Astonishing! The onion has sown more seeds. The small red pellet the Pikmin harvested after cutting down a flower appears to be some type of food that can appropriate or propagate more Pikmin. The, the onion seems to be a sort of incubator. Needless to say, I must study this strange life form more. And by more, I mean I must feed it more food! More food! Go, my small red son! Go! Consume more! And 
we shall pluck your brother in as well. Hello, my children. I am your father. I will lead you to glory. So long as you lead me to some ship parts, because I really, really do need to get home. I, I miss my wife and kids so much. Alright. So, we got a small squad of Pikmin. We got round five, and we're just gonna go around here at the impact site and see if we can find some more pellets. I see... Uh, there's a red pellet posy up here that we can throw a Pikmin on. If a Pikmin does latch onto it, uh, not, not that way. Alright, I guess that still kind of works. If a red Pikmin latches onto the pellet posy, it actually will knock it down in one hit, which is good if you want to prioritize a specific Pikmin to grab that. Let's see if there's any other posies up here. I don't think so. No, nope, that looks empty. There's a five pellet over there, which was good. Aha! I knew there was one hiding up here somewhere. Go, my small red sun. Go! Consume more! You know what? You, uh, you can help him carry him back. There we go. So yeah, you can actually dedicate more than one Pikmin to a requirement. If you see the number on top, that's how many Pikmin are needed to move said object. And the number on the bottom is how many Pikmin that you can actually put onto it. Sometimes it can be about twice as much, sometimes a little less. But either way, it's still very helpful to get multiple Pikmin onto one item to help get it back to their onions faster. Now go. We must... We must get more of your brethren. And let's go. Nine Pikmin. I feel like there should be a little bit more than just nine, so we're just gonna just... Throw all of you onto that pellet over there. We grab that five pellet. And I don't think there's anything up here. Yeah, there's no way for us to even get up there just yet. But, it seems to be all the pellets in the area, so we should have more than enough Pikmin to push that box over there, or... Yeah, it's a cardboard box. I always thought it was like a paper bag or something, but no, it's a cardboard box. Push that out of the way, and hopefully we can find the location of one of our ship parts, because we desperately do need to get one to, you know, get home safe and sound. Just put it like this. And uh, something in the game, I believe, tells you at a later date, uh, but if you tap the A button, you are able to just run around and pluck all the Pikmin that are in the little, like, uh, I guess incubation zone would be a good name for it because, well, kind of incubates them into the soil around where their uh, onions are. Alright, four Pikmin is more than enough. Uh, okay, okay, where did you come from? Oop, okay, now that one's being... Resourceful, he's go going up and helping up his brothers. Nice going, team. The Pikmin are as curious as children. They form groups to perform tasks that would be impossible for an individual. A glimmer of hope has begun to shine in my heart. If I can make use of their skills, perhaps I can fix my ship. I shall sum up all I've learned of Pikmin conduct. Approach and press A to pick sprouts. Press A to grab Pikmin, release to throw. Press B to call them, X to dismiss, use C to command, and control the group. L, R, and Z control my perspective. I should record all this in my computer. I can just press Y to access the computer. The computer and press the Y to access the computer. And we shall do that. As we can see, we got a bit of a map over here, but unfortunately, I, my computer's kind of broken, so we can't really get a map of the, li of the area. Hmm. How fortuitous that my engine would just land right here. They're all staring at me. Maybe if I don't move, maybe they won't attack. Amazing! There's no mistaking it. My ship's engine rests before my very eyes. By a stroke of pure luck, I have already stumbled upon the most important piece of my damaged craft. Fate has smiled upon me, but I want to give back to the dolphin. Hmm... Well, we do have a little army of small carrot children with me. So, of course, let's put them to work. And fortunately, we do not have enough to lift this engine. Although, to be honest, it doesn't look that heavy. I'm sure... Well, actually, no. I think the fact that it's probably moving all that stuff, that's why I need a, t a total of 20 Pikmin to lift that thing up. Alright, well, we need more Pikmin numbers, so let's just get some more Pikmin onto these pellets over here and... 
bring them back to their trusty onion. I'll have you guys up there. I'll dedicate you guys to this. And, oh, I don't have a free weapon. Alright. Well, I guess that this is, is good enough as it's going to get. It's not like we have to worry about the timer for today. Because, honestly, uh, for the first day of the game, you don't have to worry about it getting late. Nicely, get these guys back to their onion. We'll get our little carrot children grown, and then we are gonna go grab ourselves an engine. Really, probably should turn it off while we're moving it because I feel like if I was moving it while it was pumping and bumping all over the place, I, yeah, that would be very dangerous. I probably would break it before it gets back to the ship. When many Pikmin spreads, uh, seeds sprout at once, I find it rather tedious to pluck them all from the ground individually. My wife always told me I was no good at routine tasks. I guess I could try to get it all done and repeatedly, by repeatedly tapping A until I pick all the Pikmin from the ground. I've noticed that when I add Pikmin to my group, they become filled with excitement and flourish with bright color. At other times, they revert to a paler hue and gave off a dim glow. Paying close attention to these differences is bound to help me distinguish between Pikmin. What are you talking about? They're all positively glowing. Even when they're born, they're positively glowing. Let's just keep picking some more of these Pikmin, and that should do it. Now, I believe that the total number of Pikmin you can actually have on day one is 25. They don't give you a whole lot to work with, but it's just enough to get a decent amount of them to work on the engine. I could have sworn that you could probably up it to 30, but I might just be misremembering. Or who knows, maybe that's something that was changed in the Wii version. Because there are some significant changes between the Wii and GameCube version, and you might be wondering why I picked the GameCube version over the Wii version. And the reason behind it is nostalgia. Also, it's just the, the version I always grew up with and was more comfortable with. I never really liked how the Wii version uh, controlled from the looks of things, because while, yes, you were able to easily maneuver the pointer to where you want to throw your Pikmin a lot easier, I always found it to be a little tedious looking, uh, given the camera perspective. Plus, I was always more accustomed to how the, the controller, like, cursor worked. And honestly, it's not as bad as you think. Maybe it's just because I'm so used to Battalion Wars and the way that I've just been used to doing strategy games with a controller and having to just use, like, a radial, uh, as compared to, like, pointer. Who knows? But, either way... Got our small children carrying this heavy engine all the way back to our ship. It's going to take a little bit of time before they can get over there, but I'm sure they'll make it in decent time. They are resourceful, after all. <sighs> I hope this doesn't avoid the insurance. Because, seriously, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to get the pause back from this thing. Well, it's nice the turn signal works now. Oh, glorious! With the help of these Pikmin, I've taken a huge step back towards my home. My ship can once again lift off. The glimmer of hope is beginning to burn more brightly. But what has become of the remaining parts? The search starts tomorrow. Boy, it's a good thing that when my engine hit the ship, it didn't damage anything in repairs. Day one since impact. I have somehow managed to launch the dolphin, but I was surprised to see the onion lifted off with me. Perhaps the Pikmin cannot survive overnight on the planet's surface, or have they merely decided to join me in for other reasons? Either way, it seems they will be they will help me again tomorrow. 
The dolphin is missing 29 parts. If I cannot recover them all, I may never return to my family on planet Hokotate. Analysis shows life support systems will function for only 29 more days. How can I repair my dolphin in such short time? A dense forest is visible on the surface below. As it holds the keys to my survival, I name it the Forest of Hope. I explore it tomorrow. And here's our stats for today. Overall, a steady growth, but yeah, our adventure is just beginning. So, let's save. Save complete. And head back up into the lower orbit. All right, well, while we usually would do a day uh, a video here, seeing as how the impact area was kind of a tutorial area and it's not that long, I honestly think it's best if we actually do the Force of Hope on the first day as well. So, let's head on down there and hopefully we can find some more uh, ship parts. And who knows, maybe some other surprises down there for us. And also, it's time for the most iconic song in this series. Most iconic and also most soothing, I love the Force of Hope's theme just because it's just one of the most relaxing themes in this game. I honestly find myself listening to it every now and then, especially when I'm editing videos, because it's just such a nice, uh, calm tune. My dolphin has returned to the surface along with the Pikmin's onion. Being alone on this strange planet makes me somewhat uneasy, so I shall call the Pikmin out of the onion. All I need to do is stand in the light beneath the onion and press A. All right, you lazy bums, get out of here. Come on, let's go. Each and every one of you. Every Pikmin for himself. All right. So... Got a bit of a little safety area right here in this little landing zone, so let's just start working on getting some more Pikmin for our, our little battalion right here. Uh, seriously? We didn't grab... Alright, fine, whatever. Let's grab the pellets. And while you guys are working on the pellets, I'm gonna have you over here plucking grass. I'm gonna have you over here plucking this grass. And I'm going to have the rest of you over here, and we're going to start breaking down this wall. This wall actually does take a decent amount of time, and I want to get this done as fast as possible. All right. So, while those guys are plucking over there, and while this dude is just, like, like, what's he, what's he doing? Oh, he's, he's being lazy. He's taking a nap, huh? No, get up here. Every Pikmin has to pitch in. It's the only way we're going to get off this place alive. Well... I am. You guys are kind of condemned to live here for all of eternity because this is your home planet, after all. all. Right. You guys keep working on that. And seriously, there is nothing in this grass. I kind of was hoping that at least, like, one. A single one. Please, come on. One of you has to have what's hiding over there. Oh, he's so sad. Hey. Oh, no. Okay. No. No, you fool. Another intriguing discovery. A local variety of grass produces a sort of yellow nectar. When the Pikmin drank this delicacy, they instantly matured into flowers. This apparent Pikmin favorite seems to be full of nutrition. Closer observation is needed to determine the strengths and peculiarities uh, of these familiar flower Pikmin. That's what I really wanted to avoid. That's why I only had one Pikmin work on the, the grass patches. The thing about Pikmin and nectar. Pikmin are greedy little shits, and one Pikmin can suck up an entire, like, uh, blob of nectar, as you just saw right there. So it's best to just swarm as many Pikmin as you can onto the nectar to get the most out of what's there. And we got a decent number of flower Pikmin. The, the difference between flower Pikmin is the fact that leaf Pikmin are the slowest out of all the Pikmin types. They're also the most clumsy, and there will be more often than not, I'm going to see one tripping and falling on and flat on his face. But I'll talk more about it later. Right now we have our first enemy of the game, the Dwarf Bulborb. He's very easy to take out if you can just get a Pikmin to land on top of him. There we go. Kind of adorable. I honestly kind of feel bad for killing these things, especially like the little cry they give out at the end, but... I'm about ready to eat my Pikmin. I wasn't going to let that happen. I will say this about this over the... Or, uh, about the, the Wii version over the GameCube version. It's kind of a bit easier to target uh, the Bulb Orbs to... 
uh, get your Pikmin to latch onto them and crush them in one hit because while well, it does take about like three to five hits to take out a Bulborb when you just have the Pikmin strip attacking it, it it's a one shot every time you just land a Pikmin directly on top of it. And unless you're like in dire straits, it's always preferable to actually just like throw the Pikmin onto the Bulborbs instead of the uh, the rush attack, although seeing as how those two are pretty close together, we're probably gonna have to rush them and hopefully not accumulate any losses because I actually would like to try and get uh, as far as I can into the game without losing a single Pikmin, but knowing how the Pikmin are sometimes and they can be very, very stupid, uh, we, we're probably not gonna do a deathless run. As nice as it would be and as somewhat implausible as it will be given Pikmin AI and all, more often than not, I'm probably going to lose these guys to some very stupid things. Oh, missed a couple. I'll just pluck you guys so that we'll get more the merrier. And there was a... What was that? Okay, that's a 10. I thought it was a 24 second. That's a good way to get our Pikmin numbers up. And I see another ship parts resting over there. So first things first. We're just going to strike them from behind. Take them out before they consume any Pikmin. And nice, we actually managed to take them out before they took any Pikmin. Why, it's the Eternal Fuel Dynamo. It has an unlimited energy supply. I won't have to worry about saving electricity anymore. This will make my fight for survival a bit easier. Here. Oh, always gotta conserve energy. And we just have a little over enough to get it back to the ship. So let's see if we can actually call a couple Pikmin off so we can keep working on upping their numbers a bit. Okay. Alright, guys, guys, sir, guys, 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 please get the dynamo, get the dynamo. Remember when I said Pikmin AI can be finicky at times? So here we go. Alright, 40, go. You three, you can carry the Bulwar back. Now, I would like to turn your attention to the top of the screen. What you see up there is the clock for the day, and there are three, uh, like, I, I guess, like, milestones for it. You got the start of the day, which is on the left. You got midday, or I guess in this case the afternoon, which is in the middle. It's giving you a warning that you only have half the amount of time left to get, get what you want in that day done. And then on the right is when night falls, and we definitely want to make sure that we have all our Pikmin with us, or have them back at the base camp, because any Pikmin that get left behind get completely wiped out. Eternal Fuel Dynamo. This should light things up. No more candles for me. I've now recovered two out of 30 parts. If I can just find three more, I should be able to increase my ship's capabilities. How, how would candles function in low atmosphere, Omar? I, I feel like either the lack of oxygen or the fact that it would be very cold and very windy there, especially seeing as how we don't have a canopy for our cockpit, means that there would be no way for a candle to function up there. Ah, well. Well, we're almost reaching midday, and we have this to deal with. This is a spotty bulb orb. These things are nocturnal. So, during the entirety of the day, they will be fast asleep. And so, what we want to do is get our Pikmin behind it, and bum rush him! Get your Pikmin latched onto it as fast as possible! There we go! I honestly was kind of surprised that we managed to get through that without a single Pikmin dying on us. Alright, you guys start carrying that back, you guys start carrying this back, and the rest of you... I said the rest of you can start working on this wall over here. Uh, where is the... Uh, oh my god. Wait, why, why is my Pikmin count off? Is one... No, no, one isn't stuck there, but what happened to the missing Pikmin? My clock has indicated the coming of noon. From now on, I must pay close attention to the sun meter on my monitor and choose my actions accordingly, so it's best for me to review my monitor's data. Across the top of my monitor are the sun meter and day display. At the bottom are my spacesuit damage meter and the Pikmin gauges. From left, these numbers reflect the Pikmin under my command, the Pikmin in the field, and the total number of Pikmin, including those in the onions. 
To adjust my monitor, I can press L to rotate the camera, R to zoom, and Z to change the viewpoint. I can also press Y to view detailed computer analysis, as I went through multiple times before. Where is this one Pikmin? Hello? Are you a ghost? Did one actually die in battle and now he's forever haunting me? I don't see him. Did he get caught up on the work crew over on the wall? Oh, there he is! Got caught up on the wall before even leaving camp. My god. What? What is wrong with you? You're the, you're the special pick, aren't you? I can tell because you're a leaf. Uh, uh, I, I, I didn't mean... I meant leaf in a good way. Yeah, that, that's right. Come on, let's play your brothers. And hopefully, if I play my cards right, we should be able to... Oh, nope, that was the sound of the gate coming down, which is good. Look at this lazy bum over here just sitting down. Not contributing, not helping out in the growth of his brothers. How inconsiderate of him. Alright. Oh, well, let's get you guys going over here. And let's meet up with the rest of the army, which is just sitting pretty right over here. And there is a door forward right here, so what we're gonna do, we actually want to... Hopefully take it out in one hit. There we go. Uh, the reason is, is because had that Bulborb alerted the, the big Bulborb over there, it would have woken up and attacked us and probably would have destroyed us. So for now, let's just sneak behind this big boy and bum rush him once more. Wow, that was a successful bum rush if ever there was one. Oh no! We lost the Pikmin! How? I guess he got crushed when the bullboard landed. That's the only reasonable explanation I can think of. Oh well. It only took me the second day to lose a Pikmin to a very stupid way, but whatever. We got a new onion. And a yellow seed popped out. We must grow our yellow sun. For he shall be strong and beautiful. And have very big ears. The color is different, but it seems to be a Pikmin nonetheless. First glance suggests that this one has what, it in some circles, could be considered very large ears. It looks like it may weigh less than others. In what other ways might it be different from red Pikmin? No matter, they are obviously quite similar, so I shall call this one a Pikmin as well. Introducing the yellow Pikmin! They are very light, they are very weak, and they're kind of not that good in this game, to be honest. And it only took them until Pikmin 2 for them to be actually useful. A lot of people really don't like yellow Pikmin for whatever reason. I kind of like them because, well, they, they get flung very high up. I'm guessing, well, Olimar says that they are very light, but I like to think that their ears make them very aerodynamic. So, we'll just have this guy over here start sprouting some of his brothers. And I want to see if I can actually... Alright, you guys, I'm going to need you to just chill over here for a minute. We're going to try to get the yellows to grab that bulb orb. Both the big and the small one. That way we can get a decent amount of their numbers up. Because when you start with a new one unit of Pikmin, well, you, you got to start fresh. So you, you got to start from the beginning. I like your tenacity, little one, but unfortunately, it's just too much for you to handle. Here, have something more of your size. There we go, I actually latched onto the pillow pose that time. There we go. What the? Get over there. Get up! There we go. Ugh, like I said before, Pikmin can be very stupid at times. got six Pikmin on us, so if we can get these guys plucked in, hopefully get them over to... Uh, all rattled up together, we could probably be able to get that bolt orb in due time. Come on. There we go. Got ten. What the? You can join a view up there, buddy? Alright. You guys, pull this boy back here. And, uh, well, 
while that is happening, let's go and show off the other thing that the Pikmin have to offer. Yellows are demolitions experts. The yellow Pikmin have picked up some peculiar stones. Why did they decide to grab them? This action seems to be instinctive of the yellow Pikmin, just, but just what are these strange glowing stones? Brightly glowing cracks cover them. Perhaps these cracks indicate there's tremendous power locked away within the merits this mirrors for the research. So, yellows uh, give the designation of I've made yet another Pikmin related discovery. Just when I was about to exceed 100 Pikmin in the field, the onion stopped expelling seeds, yet the total number of Pikmin continued to climb. It seems that once there are 100 Pikmin in the field, subsequent seeds get stored inside the onion. Thus, no more than 100 Pikmin can be in the field at one time in any area. As I was saying, Olimar. Uh, these uh, get slightly upgraded to bomb rock Pikmin. They, uh, once again, are your demolitions experts, and also very dangerous. V very dangerous. You, you know, you guys definitely don't want to be over there. You guys go over here for a second. We want to get our bomb rock Pikmin, and we want to toss them over at the stone walls. Now, while Pikmin can break the wooden walls, bomb rock Pikmin do not have the, uh, or stone walls do not break as easily. The glowing rocks that the yellow Pikmin picked up seem to be explosive stones. Perhaps they know that these stones can be used as powerful weapons. The bomb rocks are dangerous, so I must take care of using them, but they should be able to blast open the stone walls that block the pathways. I may even be able to use them against some of the wild creatures. I must be vigilant. Pikmin I dismiss by pressing X, bring their bombs when I call them back. Pikmin I throw by pressing A, drop their bombs when I call them back. Keep clear of the explosion. When I touch Pikmin directly, they keep their bombs and fall in line. That's good to know. That is really good to know because, like I said, bomb rocks are very dangerous. And there's been many a times where I have had a Pikmin drop a bomb rock in the area where he or a, a whole group of them have gotten blasted to smithereens. And there is no greater pain than seeing an entire group of Pikmin get blown up by sheer stupidity of, well, other Pikmin. All right. Uh, we could probably make some decent progress with the ship part up there, and that's actually one of the most valuable ship parts in the entire game, so... You know what? Let's see how far we can get that. I'm missing Pikmin. I... Please tell me that someone brought the... Okay, they're inside the base camp, so we don't have to worry about that. My clock is indicating the approach of sunset. Pikmin wait beneath the dolphin, and onions will probably enter the onions on their own. But if I don't call the stragglers and add them to my group, they may they may not be able to get back. I'm sure that the Pikmin still planted are safe, but I'm somewhat concerned about leaving Pikmin to fend for themselves in the darkness. Well, they're anything but smart, so definitely want to keep them out of the darkness. Let's just take these eggs out very fast, take out the new enemies, the sheer grubs, and we just lost some Pikmin. I think we lost a, sing uh, a single pick into it. I hate sure grubs. I hate them with a passion. They are the hands down the, one of the most annoying ground enemies in the game. Let's get you guys up here real quick and at least get this off this little shelf. Oh, I need it. Oh, come on, come on, get that down there. Get that down there. There we go. It's my whims whimsical radar. With this, I'll be able to see all the nearby ship parts in a single glance. I just press Y to check it. This find still fills me with great hope. All right. Well, now that that's sitting off the shelf, it should be safe to pick up and see as how all the sure grubs and the uh, bulborbs have been taken care of. We don't have to worry about them messing with us when we come back for that ship part in the future. All right, come on guys, let's head home. Hope the yellows can find their way back to their onion in the dark. Two days since impact. It appears that many of my ship's parts have landed in this region. If I can just recover 
the parts of my radar, I should be able to use my radar screen. How that would improve my chances, then I'd only have to press Y to locate my parts. Yet, there seems to be many hostile life forms here. If I'm attacked and my spacesuit takes damage, I must return to my ship, stand in front of it, and press A to make suit repairs. As I explore, I must pay attention to my suit's damage meter in the bottom left corner of the screen. Alright, three lost in battle, although I honestly hate the fact that I lost that one to that bulb orb. But still, made some pretty big numbers in our Pikmin Sprouts. Uh, we got our yellows and a fair decent amount of yellow. I don't think we actually lost any yellows. I think it was all just reds that we lost in, in today, given what that line graph shows. Oh well. We got two ship parts, and there's 28 days left. I think we can make some decent progress. Next time on Pikmin, we're going to return back to the Forest of Hope and search more ship parts as well as snag the radar that we neglected to bring back to base. As well as maybe get a little bit more use out of our new yellows. We'll see. Anyways, see you guys next time. Later.